Come on, uh, Cahirlock. Firstly, just want to uh, thank uh, my colleague uh, Jennifer Whitmore for bringing forward this motion. And firstly, want to respond just to the minister's comments that there was two things uh, lacking uh, in his comments and responses, as Deputy Gannon uh, foretold. He did give us a list of the different measures that the government are taking, but we didn't get what we didn't get was a timeline for the implementation of a windfall tax. Uh, we've no timeline on that at all from the minister. So I'd ask the that the Minister in the concluding remarks gives us an actual timeline as to when a windfall tax is going to be brought in. It's long overdue. And secondly, there was no substantial response to our uh, proposal for targeted price cap measures along the lines of what's been introduced in Germany. So we need to hear from the government, are they going to take that uh, proposal? Uh, and if not, uh, why, why not? What's your position uh, on that? The point just made by uh, my colleague, Deputy uh, Catherine Murphy, about the uh, energy charter, I think is a very well made uh, point. And it is disappointing uh, that the government's position on this has been so weak. Let us be clear about the energy charter and what it entails. It means that the Irish government, the Irish state, the Irish people can be sued by an energy company reliant on fossil fuel, not only for money that they've invested to date in terms of fossil fuel infrastructure, they can sue on the basis of future unearned profits, which is colossal. So there needs to be a real position of leadership uh, from the Irish government on this. It's not enough for the Irish government to fall behind uh, on this and say it's under review, under consideration. There's a 20 year lead in to get out of the obligations under that charter. And given where we are in climate change and in fossil fuels, we need to be out of that energy charter years ago, but at least we need the government to be leading on this uh, now. It is not compatible in any way with our Paris uh, climate change objectives, uh, and we should not. We need to show leadership on this, and indeed any other international treaties, the likes of CETA, that allow for investor courts and for the government to be sued uh, by uh, energy companies and fossil fuel companies for future unearned profits, we need to not get into any further commitments on that. And when you see the huge profits uh, of some of these uh, multinational companies, the likes of Exxon with 51.5 billion profit last year, 5.8 million as my colleague Deputy Gannon said, every hour last year being made, uh, we shouldn't be uh, signed up to any of these treaties that give them uh, any uh, leeway at all. I want to raise one specific uh, point uh, with the Minister in terms of district heating systems and I know as the as both ministers will agree, we should be encouraging the use of district heating systems. They can be sustainable. But what's happened to people living in housing reliant on district heating systems during this energy crisis has been an absolute uh, disaster. They've faced the absolute sharp end as they've been uh, systems that have been reliant on gas and have been charged commercial rates of gas uh, have led to a situation where uh, social housing uh, tenants in particular and including uh, social housing tenants and prepay meters have been put in a particularly difficult uh, position. I know, for example, in one area of my constituency, 20% of social housing tenants have been cut off uh, from the prepay meters and have no access uh, to hot water uh, or heat uh, through their district heating systems. They don't have other alternatives. I've raised this with the government on multiple occasions. It hasn't been uh, addressed. This is leading to inhumane uh, conditions for people in particularly people in lower incomes, some of whom have long-term uh, illnesses. This has led to a situation where uh, people uh, renting in social housing cannot take a hot shower. They're cut off from water. They're now washing in basins. And I don't need to remind uh, the ministers that it's 100 years ago since we started installing uh, baths into social housing in this city uh, so that people could take, uh, would have access to that basic uh, facility uh, in their homes and wouldn't have to wash in basins anymore. Under this government, because you failed to act on the issues affecting energy prices and particular people in district heating systems, there are now substantial numbers of people back to washing out of uh, basins. And you won't act on it. You're not doing anything on it. The government response on it is, well, it's under review. We'll do something about it in the future. It's been looked at, but we need emergency measures now to get people back to access to the basic humane conditions that the rest of us all take for granted and I would urge you to act on our motion to respond to the points we've made and to act for this uh, particular group of uh, vulnerable social housing tenants that have been totally left out in the cold and ignored by the government. Government August.